Hello and welcome to App Talks. I'm Andrew Godhelf with the Salesforce App Exchange. App Talks is a series of conversations with Salesforce customers to understand how solutions from the App Exchange are helping to improve business outcomes. Today we're in Denver, Colorado at the offices of Solace Pediatric Home Healthcare, where I'll be sitting down with CEO Darcy Peacock and Director of Clinical Services Asia Rudikoff to understand how Schedulo has transformed Solace's ability to better serve its key stakeholders and patients. Darcy, Asia, thanks so much for having me here at your offices in Colorado, and thanks for joining us on App Talks. To start, if we could just give the audience a sense of what exactly Solace Pediatric Home Healthcare is and what its mission is. We are a pediatric therapy mostly company. Um, we provide physical, occupational, speech therapy, and some nursing services in the home to children really around Colorado. We're a Colorado-based company and we've been serving families here since about 2005. And what are the two of you in particular? We've laid out your titles, but what in particular are you responsible for within the organization? As CEO, sort of the traditional duties, and I oversee all of our operations. And I'm the Director of Clinical Services, so here at Salas, I oversee the therapy department, all of our clinical teams, as well as our patient access department. So for us, that's intake and scheduling. I think it's important to understand just how much schedule has impacted your organization to first go back and lay out some of the challenges that you had. So before you looked for a solution like Schedulo, what struggles were you facing as, as an organization? They were um, vast in nature, I would say. So we're a very fast growing organization um, and we currently have about 185 clinicians um, who serve our families. So when we would get a referral and those come from a variety of different sources, they can come from a hospital, a pediatrician's office, a community center board, families themselves can call us. And so when we would get those referrals in, then we'd turn around and email back out to our clinicians. Um, so we'd have to think about, okay, of my clinicians who serve this area, who of my speech therapists maybe has availability, who speaks Spanish, who's got feeding training, whatever that may be, and email out those clinicians. And then we would wait, and we'd wait to hear back from them. We're a unique organization in that um, I'm a clinician, Asi is a clinician, our owner, Mike, is a clinician, and so we've all been out there on those visits. And we know it's really challenging when you're working with a family to also be turning and straddling and looking at your email and trying to respond really quickly to a referral. Um, so sometimes we wouldn't hear back till the end of the day. Then we'd go back to our referral source and say, great, we have this clinician who can see this family. And they'd say, actually, never mind, we already found someone. We were really not um, efficient in being able to be responsive to referrals that were coming into us, um, as well as it was a challenge for our clinicians. When we would get that referral, we, we weren't really using our resources really efficiently and effectively. So Susie might respond to that referral first and we say, great, Susie, you can take this family. But then at the end of the day, someone else checks their schedule and they happen to be seeing a family in the same apartment complex or right down the street. And they also have an opening. So now we've already given this family to Susie and she's driving 20 minutes to see them where someone else had an opening right then and there and they could have worked with this family uh, much more efficiently. From a technology standpoint, what struggles were you having in terms of the systems that you had and how that was impacting your stakeholders? We didn't really have much in terms of scheduling systems. So as Darcy mentioned, we had our scheduling team, our patient access team, many of whom had their own intricate maps of where the clinicians were that they were responsible for finding referrals for and everybody really had their own system. It made things very challenging if somebody was out or if there was an issue that we had to solve with a particular family. Every single person who was responsible for taking in and scheduling these referrals was doing it in a different way. So that might be three spreadsheets, that might be a paper and pen documentation system. It really made it difficult for tracking purposes. It made it challenging to collect any sort of data and, and trend how many referrals are we getting, um, which discipline, what areas, what are our needs from a hiring standpoint. So everybody was doing their own version of, of their tech system, if you will, to, to get these kids services. And what impact did some of these challenges have on your major so you, clinicians, families, your own employees and referrers, 
how were those challenges actually impacting all of those people and sort of in the way that you're trying to further the, the mission of the organization? It really comes down to the families first. It was delaying our ability to get services out to these kids. So if we were waiting, if the, so the physicians are waiting for us to respond, we're waiting for our clinicians to respond. Meanwhile, these families are sitting there waiting for their kids to, to start services. And some of these families might have gotten recent diagnoses for their kids. They're, they might be in a state of panic where they really need that support. They want services, they want answers, they want somebody to come and evaluate their child and figure out what those next steps are. And while we're working out all of these operational pieces behind the scenes, these kids are sitting there waiting for us to get started. So there was a huge impact on the delay of getting these services to our families and just overall access for, um, for the families that we serve. Also coming back to these families too, and we would, when we would not get the best fitting clinician to serve them right off the bat, in that example I gave, if Susie starts seeing them but then that drive gets to be too long and she needs to transition them to another provider, that child's already formed a bond and has a connection with that clinician, they have to sort of start all over if we move a new clinician into that territory. So uh, making sure we get it right, right off the bat is really important. A number of our kiddos have challenges with really building those connections and sort of that, that social piece. And so when they have to start over with that, it just delays their progress towards their goals. Mm -hmm. And then for our clinicians, it was really impactful in that they were spending a lot of time in the car. And so some of that is the nature of home health. That's sort of what you sign up for. But we also realized that we could likely have a lot more control over that to make sure that the clinicians who are highly skilled and educated and are here to really provide these best services for these kids, they're spending most of their time treating their patients instead of driving around town. That customer group of ours really also was, was impacted by the challenges that we were having. So you had these challenges. They weren't insurmountable, but technology was going to need to be found and implemented to help. What was that search process like? How did you find Schedulo and what made it the right solution for you? We had several years ago moved to our first scheduling platform and that was really our first shift out of these spreadsheets and these individual systems that everybody was using to take in these referrals and schedule services for these families. We were with that platform for I want to say maybe like a little over a year, almost two years, and we recognized that while it was meeting a lot of our needs, it wasn't able to scale with us. And that's really what we were looking for as we started to explore different scheduling platforms. We started the search the beginning of last year, so January, February of 2018 we began our search. and. We did a lot of Googling and we set up a lot of demos and we came across the Schedulo website and we watched that little maybe two minute video of what it looks like to schedule mobile resources. We really had like a happy dance in the office. We were so excited that something that we thought only existed in a vision actually existed in terms of a technological platform. So once we set that up, I remember going to Darcy and to our owner Mike and sharing this and we set up the demo and really realized that this was going to be a, a partnership that was worth investing in. So you found Schedulo and it seemed like the right solution for you to implement across an organization with so many different stakeholders is a challenge for any organization. You'd already gone through a process, so how did you build up the trust and what was the process like to actually roll out Schedulo across all those different departments? There's a saying that we use around here, um, which is turn on your blinker. The way we sort of approach these things in the past is we'd want to have all of the answers and, and all of the solutions and anticipate everything, and then we would bring it to our team and say, and surprise, here's what we're doing next. We sort of have transitioned into this way of um, just turning on our blinker and what direction we're heading. So we had gotten this feedback from our team that really this the previous solution that we were on wasn't meeting the needs. And so just letting them know, we hear you, 
we're exploring this. And we don't have an immediate solution. We're gonna take our time and make sure we get this right for you mm -hmm. because change is hard for anyone. So I think just alerting them to this change that's coming way in advance, even though we didn't have answers, really helped build the trust as well as when we started talking about it, and once we had identified Schedule O was the solution, we let them know that, and here's why we chose it. And I think always going back to the why and how it's gonna make not only their lives easier, but it's gonna improve their, um, their patient satisfaction. All of our clinicians are in this to make a difference for their families, and so always helping them understand how some of these operational things really impact our families, I think really led to a lot of trust and building that up as we headed towards implementation phase. So what we realized once we had chosen Schedule O as our solution was we wanted to move very quickly. We recognized immediately the kind of impact that it would have across all of our departments, and we were very eager to make this transition. We also had a, an audit scheduled for the end of last summer, so we thought, great, our timeline is August, let's get this moving, let's get everybody switched over. And then we really had this moment of pause and reflection of how did we roll out the system last time? Was it a positive experience for everybody involved? Could we do a better job? Could we explain more about why we're making the changes that we're making and make sure that we're setting everybody up for long-term success? And so we slowed down a little bit and we really took the time to meet with everybody in the leadership team to better understand how this type of change would impact every single department. It might not seem like a scheduling software where it might impact billing or might impact our health information management team or our nursing team, but it really truly does. And so taking the time to understand that and understand what every department needs from this software in order to be successful as a whole organization was really, was really valuable. What are the ways in which Solus is actually using Schedule L? The number one way is really the actual scheduling. So we receive referrals, like Darcy said, from all sorts of different partners within the community. We want to make sure that we are matching the best clinician with the best skill set for that particular child every single time. And that's really what the system has allowed us to do. So as we get a referral for a patient, for example, who needs a Spanish-speaking therapist with feeding expertise in this particular area of Denver, we want to make sure that we're scheduling somebody who matches that skill set to make sure that we're serving that family the best way that we can, but also that we're finding a clinician in that service area so that we have that continuity of care for that family. So again, as Darcy mentioned, that we are avoiding any sort of transitions, unnecessary disruption of services for these kids. So that's definitely the, the number one way. When we looked to make this move, we were really trying to also engage sort of differently with our customers. So um, with our families, for instance, we've utilized the system to allow us to communicate more directly with them. So now we're texting them when we have found an evaluation spot for them. So we're not having to play phone tag and make sure that this works and they're calling us after work or they're busy with their children. So it's just streamlined that communication with them. And then we're also texting them a reminder 24 hours before the appointment um, and then again when our clinician is on the way. What would happen before is a clinician would come out of an appointment, they're set up back to back to back, they come out and they're running a few minutes behind and so they, they text really quickly to that family and say I'm running a little bit late, I'll be there in 15 minutes. Now the system will do that for them so when they say they're on the way the family gets a text and it notifies them that it'll be about 15 minutes um, and, and then they'll be there. We've tried to engage our families in this process as well. And also um, on Sunday afternoons, the family gets an email and it has their calendar for the week. So a lot of our families receive multiple services from Solace. They might receive all three therapies, which means a lot of different days, a lot of different juggling for schedules. And so that's our way of saying, here is your outlook for the week. Here's what you can prepare for. Don't forget, you've got physical therapy on Thursday afternoons with this person, and it helps set them up for success and also really significantly impacts our clinicians because then our clinicians aren't showing up to, you know, people forgetting about their appointments. The clinicians can just focus on the care, right? They don't have to worry about mapping out their day and responding. Exactly, and that's the biggest thing. We've taken not just the administrative burden off of them, but really that scheduling efficiency piece. So if we can have visibility into their schedules, which Schedule O allows us to do, 
we can see, okay, well, for Susie, this patient makes the most sense, not just now, but three months from now when this child is potentially going to still need those services. Mm -hmm. What about some of the reporting functionality that you have or may have um, as you continue to build this out between Salesforce and Schedulo, what does that allow both of you to do in your roles? Historically, um, we've used our electronic medical record to gather all of our metrics. So it gives us information about how many visits a week are we doing, what types of disciplines, how many missed visits do we have, things of that nature. What we've really been looking to Schedulo and Salesforce for is just a bigger picture view outside of those smaller metrics. So for example, one of our biggest goals is to make more strategic decisions that require coordination between the therapy team and the marketing and recruiting team. As we have visibility into schedules and caseload capacities and openings in different areas for different disciplines, we're able to have more intelligent conversations with our recruiting team to say, you know what, it looks like we're having a really hard time scheduling after school appointments in this particular area for this discipline. And at this point, we think we need to add more people to our team. So it's really elevating our game from a recruiting standpoint and also just from a operational standpoint in general. As we have more visibility and we're able to collect more information, we're able to coordinate with different departments to make sure that we're making, again, the right investments for our team. And from your vantage point as the CEO, is that single source of truth, having that data in one place, allow you to analyze the operations of the business differently? Absolutely. I think it really it helps us just break down the silos between departments. As Asya mentioned in our EMR system, it was telling us what we did. But this tells us what our potential is, and I think from all different angles. Um, just having that data of coordinating between the teams, if what's holding us up is that we don't have insurance authorization, how do we deploy our resources more effectively so that we can translate these referrals into patients that we're serving? So it really has gone across all different um, departments within our organization. And just having that single source of truth, that real-time data, helps us make more strategic decisions so we're being more efficient with our resources. Ultimately, this is all about, seal your phrase, the kiddos. It's about the families and the patients. How has Schedulo allowed you to provide better care for them? Our biggest thing at Solace um, is making sure that we're taking care of these families. And the way that we do that is by taking care of our clinicians. If we can take that administrative burden off of their plates, if we can let them go out and be clinicians and do what they're trained to do and serve these families, then these families ultimately get better care. If they can really focus on their treatment sessions and new evidence-based practice models and interventions and less time driving around and trying to figure out what's the best place for this new referral, then we're doing them a service so that they can serve their families. From a, a big picture, everything Asya said, I 100% agree with. It's really been really transformational for what we're able to provide for all of our customers. On every individual level, there's so many different ways that we've ended up using Schedulo that we didn't even imagine really a year ago when we started moving down this process. And I think that's what we love about the Schedulo platform. We know that we'll be different in another year. And so um, we feel like we've got a great partner and that we're able to continue to transform how we're using it and really better the lives of our families and our clinicians. Just in our first quarter, we wrapped up um, our first full quarter on Schedulo and found that we had decreased our no-show rate by 84%. And it's such a phenomenal metric, but really every one of those has a huge impact. So for our clinicians, when they're able to go out and they're confident that their families are not gonna forget about that appointment and um, they're not gonna be spending half of their day at Starbucks, they're happier. And then for our families, we know that those families that consistently can access our services, they just make um, faster gains towards their goals. That alone, and I think that's a symptom of one, having uh, more efficient schedules, and two, those text reminders. And that's such a simple thing that so many other industries are using that um, we should absolutely be using in home health and supporting our families in that way. I love hearing how you're treating your stakeholders as customers and really working hard to provide a better customer experience and working hand in hand with Schedulo to do that. And it's really great.
on App Talks, we like to wrap up by sharing a little advice. And I think the way in which you implemented and rolled out schedule across your organization can serve as a good model for other teams. And you had to work with so many different teams in doing that. So from that process, what advice would you share with another organization who may be going through something similar? We're a highly regulated industry, and there's a lot of behind the scenes processes that can be extremely manual. And so I think all of our goal is to solve those issues, um, which is great. And that's a, a step in the right direction. Healthcare is moving to, you've got less resources to do, you need to do more with. So building in those efficiencies is, is top priority, I think, for everybody. But not just stopping there. I think the key is really looking at what else can you do? How else can you engage your customers? And so I think if we had only been looking at this to solve that scheduling issue, we need to respond faster, I think we would have been really missing um, a lot of opportunity for our organization and for our customers. So so I think just looking at it much more globally is really a key on the front end when you start on that path. And to add to that, I would say taking the time to assess what the needs are now and to anticipate what the needs are going to be of the organization. So making sure that you are, again, not just thinking about short term, mm -hmm. but thinking about how something like this could impact all of these different departments what it looks like now, what challenges you might anticipate you'll have in a year from now, in two years from now, and really investing the time to sit down with that team and understand what does each team need from this system to be successful, and then um, you know what is worth investing in to have that long-term success. Is it time? Is it pushing back your goal for you know, implementation, what does that look like? Something that we found that was really successful for our team that I would urge everybody to really, to really use is that blinker. Turn on that warning sign, understand that change, no matter how small and how beneficial it is, is really challenging for most people, and that's okay. So how can you set yourself up, how can you set your team up to prepare for that change, to understand why the organization is taking this turn, and to really understand what that impact is going to be for each of these stakeholders so that everybody can have that buy-in, everybody can have that ownership, um, and really be excited for this change. It's great advice. It's a really great story, and I love hearing how it's impacted your organization, ultimately helping people at the other end, which is really great. So thank you so much for having me here. And Darcy Asia, thanks so much for joining us on App Talks. Great, thank thanks you. for having us.